replaying it over and over and over again in her head because the scoreboard was in her favor. That is mm. so heartbreaking. And because they couldn't God darn, put man. anything less than a full second, the other lady won. What's good, y'all? It's the Duma Shats React, and we're back with another video. Who we got today, see? Today we're back with another reaction. Yes, Super yes. excited about this video. If you're new to us and, and we're new, new to you, you, make sure you scroll down, hit, hit that, that subscribe, subscribe button, button, and turn on the post notification bell because we're, we're on, on the road to 50K. And we cannot get there without you guys, all right? Join the family. Without further ado, let's get into the video. Let's get it. A minority sport where honor and respect are key, scandal is practically unheard of. That all changed in 2012. Before we get to all that, a quick guide to Olympic fencing. Epe bouts are the most straightforward type of fencing contest to watch and referee. The rules are simple. The first fencer to hit their opponent on any part of their body earns a point. After each point, the fencers return to their on-guard positions, and they go again. Whoever has the most points when time expires is the winner. If the two fencers... What if your arms are longer than the, your opponent? Ain't that like one of the biggest advantages? Mm. I'll definitely poke you before your arm even reach me. Right. Maybe we'll just have to find out the rules. Yeah. To certain things, like how they match each this other. This is different. I've seen this for so many years, but it's I never movies. really, like... Got a chance to dive into the, the, the concept. Mm -hmm. So here we Me go. Either. Okay. Hit each other at the same time, they're both awarded a point. Okay. The exception to this rule is when the scores are tied and the next hit would win the match. In these circumstances, the scores remain the same and the bout restarts. It's so thin, how can you see? The women's Epe semi final in 2012 saw reigning Olympic champion Britta Heidemann take on South Korea's Shin Alam. Okay. As we just said, whoever could land the most hits in the time available would win the bout. But that's not strictly true. It isn't quite that simple. Before a sudden death extra minute starts, one fencer is randomly assigned priority, meaning that in the event of a tie, they're awarded the win. Going into the extra minute, Shin Alam had priority, so a draw would be enough for her to progress to the final. It was cagey. As they entered the extra minute, the scores were locked at five each. Mm. The priority rule meant that the onus was on Heidemann to attack. <clears throat> Shin was in control. With 24 seconds remaining, Heidemann went on the offensive. In the space of 20 seconds, she registered five hits. Unfortunately for her, each one was successfully countered by Shin, resulting in a series of double hits, none of which Golly. registered as points. Time was running out. With one second on the clock, it was do or die for Heidemann. Sick. Another attempt failed. She tried again. Ooh, no luck. Her, the official like, clock good. was still showing one second. She Golly. tried again. Shin forced another double hit. Incredibly, the clock still displayed one second. The fencing clock ticks down in increments of one full second. So whether there's one thousandth of a second remaining or a full second remaining, the clock will display one second. But after three Heidemann attacks, Shin knew that there could only be fractions of a second left. Victory was in sight. The referee asked the timekeeper to ensure that the clock was correct. The timekeeper misinterpreted this instruction and started the clock which immediately hit zero. The crowd thought it was all over, and Shin appeared to have won. But the bout hadn't officially restarted, oh, so the elapsed time didn't count. It was up to the referee to put time back on the clock. That's, that, that happens a lot in sports. I feel like the referees do be kind of, you know, mismanaging the time clock a lot. You see mm -hmm. that in basketball, you see that in the football as right. well. Um, like that time when y'all trying to make y'all extra point and the, 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 the time was like, they put like a good 10 minutes for y'all to, to come back. It wasn't it minutes. It was 20 seconds on the clock. We won the game. They put it on there because of y'all. And a lot of times and the audience, won. go ahead. 
okay. A lot of times the audience <laughs> do catch it first because they're like really engaging with mm -hmm. the game and they start hollering yeah, on the, yeah. to the field and all. So I wonder if they do this as well when they see the time clock kind of mismanaged. I know people are like really invested into the, uh, the sport. Yeah, you know and it saying? seems they chill in the audience. Yeah. Yeah, they, they chill. <laughs> the smallest number that could go on the clock was a full second. It was inaccurate, but she had no choice. Heidemann had another chance and she had time to play with. Shin was distraught. Her coach was furious, but his protest fell on deaf ears. Mm. It meant there would be another chance for Heidemann, who wasn't ready to give up her title of Olympic champion. It was a clean hit as time expired. Wow. Heartbreak for Shin. The Koreans launched an appeal. According now. to fencing rules, Shin Alam could not leave the piste whilst the officials analyzed the appeal. She waited and waited. She kept, she kept her, uh, her title. They say she's from Germany. Even after the official appeal was rejected, she remained on the piste in tears, eventually being escorted off by officials from the International Fencing Federation. In total, she was there for 70 heartbreaking minutes. The image of Shin sat alone on the piste, weeping uncontrollably, became an iconic moment of the 2012 Olympic Games. And the fans inside the XL Arena left knowing that they had witnessed a bizarre slice of Olympic Games history. Man, I know she like replaying it over and over and over again in her head because the scoreboard was in her favor. That is mm. so heartbreaking. And because they couldn't God put darn, man. anything less than a full second, the other lady won. That's heartbreaking. I would be there upset. What? Because that I'm happens mad. to us a lot, you know, mm. during sports. And I, I would be so mad, especially I was senior year. Mm. <sighs> yeah. Hey, man, it's, it is what it is. I ain't not see this one coming. I, that's a curveball. I thought we was just yeah. going to get into the gif of the sport. Mm. Um, but this definitely is intense. Yeah. It's intense. To say we don't know nothing about tense, uh, <laughs> like, fencing. Fencing. It's called yeah. fencing. Yeah, to say we don't know anything about fencing, we was in tune. Yeah, I definitely <laughs> watched this. I ain't, I seen it. Like I said, I seen it before, but I never mm -hmm. had a chance to really sit down and understand it. Um, yeah. I thought it was just like a sport to just do things. Not even much of a sport, just like a, a hobby. I, I thought it had, uh, oh, maybe I'm thinking of the Knights. Yeah, that's the yeah, kind of that's the same thing. The swords. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I've seen it like um, featured in movies. I've seen like, it in a lot of movies too. With high school. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Let us know. Is there like a um, a documentary on a famous fencer or anything? Like somebody that's you know? just dominating the whole yeah. sport. Like I'm talking about A1 sauce from the beginning yeah. of the time. We need to know who that is so we can yes. really see. So we could check that out. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, yeah. So this was a cool video. We hope you guys enjoyed it with us. Like this video, subscribe, turn on the post notification bell. We have enabled our super, super thanks if you like to support the channel that way. As well as our reaction request form is in our description, description box below. below. We'll see you soon. Peace. Peace.